Hi folks, Lee W. Miller here again. The best resource you can find having to do with Napa Valley and Sonoma Valley. Whether it's about the people in the communities, the interest, the history, the unknown gems, things to do in Napa Valley or Sonoma Valley, or the current trends in buying or selling real estate in either of these two areas. This week, I wanted to clarify something that comes up often with folks from out of the area, and that is, what exactly does the term Napa Valley encompass? Much of what I'll clarify about Napa Valley, you'll come to realize is also similar to Sonoma Valley. Maybe that's a future video, we'll see. When folks hear the term Napa Valley, it's often mistaken as one big single bit of real estate or land or the entire community when actually Napa is comprised of five general independent cities, actually four cities and one town. We'll get to that in a little bit. For the sake of time, this video is just gonna clarify five of the ones that I'm gonna mention. There's actually 10 if we included Rutherford and Oakville and Polk Valley and Angwin, things of that nature, but I'm just gonna focus on the five primary ones, whatever term you want to apply to that. So Napa is actually a county. It's one of the 58 counties that comprise the entire state of California. And Napa Valley is a specific part of that county. The Napa Valley area is roughly 30 miles in length and approximately three to five miles wide at its widest point. The area is a flat valley floor bordered by the east and west boundaries, which are made up of the Baca Range on the east side and the Mayacamas Range on the west side. Those are small mountain ranges. Of that total land area, there are those 10 communities, but really, like I said, we're just gonna focus on five of those. They're laid out pretty much from north to south in my videos that I'll be doing for you. And those five, primary cities are on the valley floor. We have the city of Calistoga, where we are today, moving south to the city of St. Lena. A little bit further south, the town of Yonville. They're kind of funny, they don't want to be a city, they want to retain their um, title as a town. Then we have the city of Napa, the largest of these five. And then the furthest south in the Napa County is American Canyon. Now that I've brought a little bit of clarity to what Napa Valley consists of and how it's laid out, let's take a look at just one of the small towns. I'm sitting here in the beautiful town of Calistoga. A little backstory on Calistoga to start with. The community was established in 1859 has a rich amount of history that makes up Napa Valley. Believe it or not, and I just thought of Ripley's Believe It or Not, and there's <laughs> my hometown, Santa Rosa, has a Ripley's Believe It or Not museum. Um, so I don't know why I got off track on that. But <laughs> I, I guess I threw that in there to let you know that my hometown, Santa Rosa, and that's in Sonoma County, and we'll probably do a future video there. So, the backstory. 1859 is when Calistoga was established. Part of that, believe it or not, is actually cousins of Abraham Lincoln settled in this area in the late 1800s. And the main street that runs through Calistoga, this street right here, is called Lincoln Avenue. And even though the old Lincoln Ranch, oh, you, you can go by. That's the, very Thank polite of you. Me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Now you're in the video, though. That's cool. <laughs> um, so that's Lincoln Avenue. And the old Lincoln Ranch is now owned by the Gamble family. But many of the Lincolns are still in the area. So the story goes, when told about how Calistoga got its name, apparently the leader of the settlement expedition between Mexico and California Samuel Brannan, he was a tad tipsy on the valley's provisions and in announcing the new town of Saratoga, he accidentally slurred Calistoga 
Sarifornia instead of Saratoga, California. So, as they say, the rest is history. So, I don't know what he was tipsy on. Maybe it was Saint Blanc, but back in the 1800s, who knows? But, I digress. Although its population is just over 5,000 residents, there are some really quaint hotels in Calistoga. As well as roughly 110 of the over 500 wineries in Napa Valley. But the star of this sweet little town would have to be the myriad of spas and resorts the town hosts primarily those with hot springs that are natural here. Several of the hotels actually offer a very large swimming pool that is always at about 95 degrees as well because it's natural and doesn't cost any money to heat it up to that temperature. There's the Calistoga Spas and the Calistoga Geysers with geothermal pools underground in Lake County, Sonoma County, and Napa County, but very prevalent right here in this town. Indian Hot Springs Hotel being one of the most popular ones. It's California's oldest continuously operating hotel that offers the springs and the mineral, mineral baths. And yet it's pretty amazing that a lot of folks don't even know, they just don't have any awareness that these mineral baths are here. Hopefully, I've educated you some about that. So continuing on, not from Lincoln Avenue, but right around the corner from Lincoln Avenue, the Calistoga Police Department is right behind us. Let's take a dive into what the vibe of Calistoga is. Compared to the other cities that I'm going to be discussing, Calistoga is by far the most laid back by its by its residents, and that just the whole vibe here is a lot more chill. Perhaps it's that way because of the hot springs, because of the spas. That always relaxes people, right? I would definitely say a pro for living in Calistoga is that laid back vibe. Then there's the quaint little shops. art galleries. Here's one of our favorite art studios in all of Calistoga. Bernie Zip is the founder and owner of this fine establishment. I suggest you visit it sometime. And some really, really good restaurants as well. And the restaurants, of course, are another pro to living in Calistoga. We started? Yep. <laughs> okay. Even though I grew up just over the hill in Santa Rosa, every time I come to the town of Calistoga, I'm reminded of when I was 12 years old and I can't believe my parents let me and another 12 year old buddy of mine, and of course we were accompanied by his older brother who was all of 13, and we embarked on this trail, the Oak Hill Mine Trail. We probably hiked eight to ten miles all the way up to the top of what is referred to as the Palisades and we spent the night at 12 years old and we didn't pack dry goods or anything of that nature I had a little six pack of miniature Welch's grape juice cans in my backpack but we had our sleeping bags and one of the cool things about the history of this trail is that it used to be the road from Calistoga up over the hills to Middletown in Lake County. So when you are on this hike, you will come across various times when um, the trail is just solid granite. And from the repetitiveness of the stagecoaches and all the different wagons that were going back and forth in the main road, you can actually see wagon wheel ruts carved into that solid granite. Sometimes they're only this deep, sometimes they're this deep. And it was really, really cool as a kid, and I still think it's really cool to have witnessed that and have spent the night and survived. 
while we were up there, before it was time to go to sleep, there used to be a glider port in Calistoga. And because of the updraft in the valley along those palisades, that's where the gliders would go by. And we sat on the palisades and literally sat there with our feet dangling over this huge cliff and we watched the gliders go right past us at eye level and we they were so close we could see the whites of their eyes and usually their mouths were like what are those kids doing over there so just thought i'd share a little of the personal history of me and calistoga <laughs>